Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Mike Armstrong podcast show. And uh, this evening or uh, afternoon stateside, we're joined by Christina uh, Spekos, who is uh, a fitness and uh, nutritional coach of over 20 years experience. Mm -hmm. And she's based in Miami, Florida. So we're going to have a little chat about uh, health and fitness and entrepreneurship. Let's see where the conversation goes. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today, Christina? Are you okay? Great. Yes. Thanks so much for taking the time and having me on. I'm honored to be able to speak with you and, and get to know your audience as well. Brilliant. And it's great to have you on. I love getting people from across the pond and actually from all around the world on my podcast. So uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, before I, uh, I get going into some sort of questions about yourself, I just wanted to actually ask you, are you in lockdown at the moment over there or not? Miami is a little bit more progressive than most area of, of the country. Um, there are some restrictions and some curfews, but we're not as bad off as some other places. Okay, that's good. That's good. So, so how is business uh, in general at the moment, you know, sort of through 2020, 2021? How, how are things going for you? It's good. You know, a lot of people think that in fitness, the big rush of you know, the January 1st, new year, new me, new resolution thing is going to make everyone's business boom. And it does to a certain extent. Um, I, I kind of was a little bit more low key focusing on the people that I, I really had connections with that I knew were going to turn the corner and sign up that I could serve. I, I have a couple of people online and a couple of people in person. And then I do some other group type of fitness things and other things online. Um, so it, it's good and it's growing. You know, it's it's one of those things where I feel like there's an incredible opportunity now post COVID, not even that we're beyond COVID, but post the initial first few months of COVID where people are realizing like, we need to take care of our health. We're getting cooped up in the house. We need to move. So I do anticipate that once the new year, new me resolutions that typically fail within the first three weeks are over, we're going to start to see more people that are coming up more serious about their health and, and really realize what coaching really is. So that's kind of the message that I like to put out there when I'm going live on Facebook to my audience, like, look, if this is not like this $2 plan and you're left to your own devices, like coaching is helping you navigate through the life circle circumstances. You could have had a coach all through COVID if, if you, you know, had the motivation to do it. The problem is people lost so much motivation. So now hoping that people are seeing that maybe there's a light at the end of the tunnel, it's going to bring them back to get back to what, what they were doing before this stopped them, you know? Yeah, well, um, unlike most people who did lose a lot of uh, um, motivation and found the fridge, they lost the motivation, motivation <laughs> and found the fridge. Um, I actually did the reverse. I actually gained more motivation during the lockdown, actually to get fitter and, and healthier because I'm, I'm strategic. And I was like, well, if ever there's a time to get as fit and as healthy as you possibly can, it's when there's a killer virus out there that you need a strong immune system to beat. So I actually used intellect and strategy and yeah. motivation. I used the motivation of a pandemic to make me, you know, I exercised sort of uh, twice a day, every day for about six months, more or less, you know, from the start of lockdown, which was March last year. And uh, Yeah, oh yeah. And you know, no one's immune to this. No one is immune to feeling like, Oh, I'm, I want to drink more or eat more or sit on the couch where I mean, I'm a 20 year fitness professional. I'm a pro athlete myself. And I still found myself in moments being like, Oh, just screw it. Just get the peanut butter jar and just shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you found yourself to the fridge, I started, I started laughing. I'm like, that was me. I found the fridge too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. But, um, but yeah, you know, so, you know, I actually got more motivated, which actually I realized made me happier. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is that um, the fitter you, you are, because I'm a fit person anyway, naturally, mentally, and I'm high energy and I play a lot of sports as a kid. But, you know, sometimes you, you know, you, you prioritize business or other things over getting fit. So um, for me, I had extra time on my hand and I had a motivation. And so I got really, really fit and I loved it. And it actually, it actually led on to me creating a happiness formula which is a, a formula a routine I was doing every day, which I know made me much happier than I'm always happy anyway. I'm always optimistic, positive, happy. This took me to another level because I had like certain things which I hadn't been doing for a while consistently. I was doing it consistently. 
and uh, and so it really boosted and actually it's been one of the happiest periods of my life the whole the whole 2020 2021 so everyone else is moaning and grumbling about everything else that's going on i'm like i don't really understand what you're on about yeah and you know what i've actually had a little run-in with people ironically she was from the uk she was on facebook and she was this lady that i connected with in some fitness group who now has since unfriended me and probably blocked me because something I said about this optimism through this quarantine and despair, I made, I'm very blunt <laughs> and I'm very in your face about it, especially on my Facebook page, you're coming to get my opinion. I'm going to give you the authentic me. And through COVID, I was just getting sick and tired of people who were not taking advantage of the time in a positive light. They spent more time being depressed and frustrated. And again, I went through it too. So it's not com complete criticism, but it's a it's a, okay, at some point the buck has to stop here and you've got to think that this is an opportunity to get ahead, especially if you're entrepreneurial mindset, you get on podcasts, you get on, you know, Zoom calls, you, you, and you branch out to find a way to pivot rather than just sit there and wallow in the fact that your job is closed. So I got to do it with this one lady because I made a comment on my own Facebook page. Like, look, don't say that you don't have this, that, and anything. Go out and get it. Go figure out how to get creative to get it. So if you wanted to continue with your fitness goals, you have a floor, you have a street outside, you've got your body, maybe you got some gallon jugs. Like if you're really committed to the cause, do it. Same thing for business. I joined a, a challenge that Pete Vargas did throughout the whole entire Facebook, you know, time during the COVID thing. And every single expert was on this thing talking live about this that and everything how to do this that and the third so it's like there was no with the with the amount of time that people had just sitting in the houses there's there's either you fall into the depression of it or you find a way to pull yourself out and find possibility so it's great that you came up with the happiness formula and i want to hear what that is unless it's like top secret like out of oh, no, the book no, information no, no, no. but i think it's brilliant I want as many people on the planet to have it. I'm not going to charge a penny for it unless they want to give me a donation, which I can put the money into better use with uh, startup entrepreneurs and stuff. But I, I'm going to um, give it to the world for free. It's on my podcast. It's on my website. I've got an ebook which I can send to people. It's for free. Um, and, and basically, um, like if you have a look at my um, interviews, I've done 250 chats with entrepreneurs since the middle of June. Right? Wow. Out of my 830 episodes, 250 are with entrepreneurs from around the world. And like nearly every conversation is a positivity chat about how well everyone's pivoted, how great they're doing, all the rest of that. Because I only, I only radiate the, the positive people anyway. I don't really want to get miserable people on my podcast because they're like hard work. You know what I mean? So, 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 and obviously they're not the people who look, look at me and go, oh, what's he going on about? Like, you know, and I don't mind that. That's, you know, that's up to them. But um, so actually, when people look through my back catalog one day, I, I'm probably going to sell them as a directory for COVID when it becomes, you know, history and part of, part of um, the world at that time. People won't, won't, be, won't believe it was the COVID period, like, you know, because everyone was so positive, including myself, because we all pivoted, we all did something about it. It was a challenge that we rose up to and overcome. So why wouldn't we be positive about that? Uh, um, so I was living a, a daily routine, which I just got into a fitness routine. I've always been like pretty um, happy anyway and doing a lot of what is in my formula. But I started doing every single component element of it daily. And it just boosted my happiness through the roof. So um, it's actually called SMART, the SMART happiness formula. And that stands for sleep, meditation, ability to perform, random acts of kindness and targets. And basically, the formula is seven to eight hours of sleep a night, 30 minutes of mindfulness or meditation, looking after your ability to perform every day, which is at least 30 minutes exercise, but I was doing a lot of that, yeah, or more. Um, uh, exercise, which I covered. Hydration, I was drinking plenty of water. And, um, and a, a well-balanced nutritional diet. So I had no sweets, no rubbish, no salt, no sugar, just three meals a day of, you know, vegetables, you know, proteins, you know, chicken and, you know, stir fry chicken or whatever. I like to cook in a wok. So, so no bad stuff, just three meals a day of plenty well-balanced well nutritional food. Get rid of all the salts, the sugars, the flour, no alcohol, uh, no caffeine, because I don't drink that anyway. And so, so, so exercise 
hydration and the nutrition, getting all that in you, having the sleep and the meditation, and then doing lots of random acts of kindness, but I say at least one a day, right? It's like, you know, overdosing on random acts of kindness because of the lockdown. I've just been helping people here, caring there, volunteering there, sharing people's social media stuff, offering people free services, just helping whenever I could. So overdosing on the random acts of kindness, and then also, I was setting regular goals, targets, little daily targets and tasks where I was completing every day. And that was giving me the buzz and the excitement and the happiness of completing them. But also, I started ticking off some of... I created such massive action. Started, and, and I was so motivated and determined and happy. I started ticking off life goals and like ticking them off one by one. These are like goals I've had all my life or for long periods of my life. I'm writing a book. I wrote a book in a day and things like that. I set my podcast and I started speaking all of the time on my podcast instead of writing content constantly on blogs that I've been doing for 15 years. Just loads of great things happened and it was all a, a, a roll, you know, a, a snowball effect of doing all of those things consistently every day. So S is what? The sleep. Sleep, meditation. Ability to perform. Ability to perform. Okay. I was like, I'm missing. So sleep, meditation, ability to perform random acts of kindness and targets. Yeah. So what happened is I had the S, I had the M, I had the R, for, well, I had a K or an R, random acts of kindness or kindness. And I had a G for goals. Yeah. And I couldn't make a word and I could see the, the, the basis of a sm smart and I had to get smart about how I could yeah. make smart. Yeah. And so I made smart by swapping goals for targets and by putting exercise, nutrition, and hydration into A, which is looking after your ability That's to awesome. perform, which is which is the three things together, which are all part of your performance routine. So I ended That's up That's an getting, amazing acronym. I'm like, so yeah. So I, I made I managed to get a smart acronym out of something which most people wouldn't have been able to get smart out of. Oh my gosh. I love this. Like as a fitness and health professional, this is the kind of thing that, in fact, I will tell you this. When I was working in college sports, there was this term high performance coach, right? Still is. And yeah. it's actually very popular overseas. It, the Australians and the UK, they brought the terminology and the concept to the United States because it's just something they've been doing forever with one person, like a performance coach being the hub that connects everything. Well, yeah. at the end of the day, everything that you described in the smart formula that you have for happiness, at which ultimately happiness is synonymous with productivity, especially if you're in business, self-satisfaction and in, in athletics, it's about performance, you know, on the field in life. And it is something that I would call a very high performance model because you're addressing in that smart formula, everything that you need from a physical, mental, emotional, and of course, productivity standpoint to be a well-balanced business owner, family person, relative, whatever you want to call it, friend. And I can see why you have so much fire and energy and passion to put stuff out into the world and, and, and really feel like you know, you're doing a good thing and you're, and you're happy every day. Like that comes through very, very blatantly, obviously. Yeah. Well, I'm looking for as many disciples as possible who could have spread the word of the happiness formula. There's no commission in it. It's a commission free job because I don't make no money on it. Yeah. But what I want is people just to yeah. share it. So if I can give it to, if I can give it to other people and they want to use it, that's all I want. I want to leave a legacy of helping people. So like, if you wanted my formula, I happily give it to you. You can actually use it. You could be my, um, you could be my smart formula partner in Miami. For sure. And, and, we, and it'll be the whole like high performance living type of thing. In fact, I, you know, I almost like just changed my whole title to a high performance coach, but the average person in the middle of nowhere is going to be like, what the hell is high performance? What does that mean? Is that a formula 500 car? No, you need to okay. actually treat your body and your mind in the utmost way that any other high performer, like this is not exclusive to top level CEOs. This is not exclusive to only Tiger Woods. Like yeah. this is 
this is the well, way we should all strive to live. I like revolutionizing and I like innovating and doing something different. So forget about high performance coaching, right? It's smart performance coaching. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's smart before, but actually I've got something a little bit more than that as well. Right. So my brain is creative and it's a problem solver. Right. So let me tell you what happened. Yeah. Let me tell you what happened next. Right. So I kept creating and thinking about this sort of puzzle and the smart brain. Pick up the data, wrote everything down, I put it into a, it was like doing a Rubik's cube. You know, I had to get the formula going, et cetera, which took me a bit of time. Because I'm very creative and I don't give up, I found it eventually. Like, yeah, it, didn't, it wasn't obvious, it seeped me out over time, but yeah. But a big part of my happiness is um, success, yeah, it's results. I've been in sales all my life, yeah, since I was uh, 11. I've been an entrepreneur, I, you know, and um, I, I was 32 years. So, success is important to me, achievement is uh, important to me, winning is important to me. So, so I thought, well, actually, you know, success is part of the formula as well, but I didn't want to put success into my happiness formula because not every success isn't important to everybody. Yeah. But what I thought is for, for elite business people, success is important. Yeah. Actually, I come up with another formula for success based on my 32 years of having success in life, which is called Streams. And it's called the uh, Streams. Oh, it's called the streams success formula okay and the streams stands for uh, systems technology relationships efficiency action marketing and sales which are what i consider to be the seven core pillars of success i love that so um what i basically then thought of right is you can have success, you can have systems, technology, relationships, efficiency, action, marketing, and sales, and make a lot of money and be successful. But if you're not looking after yourself, it could be short term, and you could end up dying and, 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 and you know, leaving this planet because you never looked after yourself, but you just were successful for a period of time. But actually, if you put the two together, you've got smart streams, which is an elite business performance formula of actually getting success over a long term longevity of life. I love it. And this is like the, the whole theme can be integrated from a personal perspective to how you run your life, to how you run your business. Yeah. So, and basically, smart streams, smart streams will put you into full flow. Flow. You know, you said flow, right? Yeah. So, that was a terminology we see use in, in sports as well getting yourself into a flow state that what yeah. you're doing is effortless, that you're just so productive that you don't even have to think twice. Yeah. Have about, you ever been in full flow? Have you ever been in full flow? There have been some times, but I feel like as of late, you know, like my brain is like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I need certain people in my life to be like, just focus on the one thing. You need the meditation. The you need the meditation to clear your brain. Every I know. Minutes. That's what you need. Honestly, you, you tell me your problem. I'll give you one of the bits of the formula because they're in the formula. That's why it's the formula. <laughs> so basically, I've been into full flow and it's amazing, right? It's a bit like being a ninja. Yeah? It's like being a ninja, just everything comes easy to you. Yeah? Um, and I've been into that full flow state. It's quite hard to get into because life gets in the way. You know, unless you're actually only doing what you want to be doing all day, every day, yeah, you, you end up having to do other things and that knocks you out of flow, yeah, because you don't want to be doing it. But, um, yeah, exactly. I think if you consistently build success and you keep looking after yourself, then that's how you can get into full flow. And that's what my elite business performance is all about is getting people into, into full flow. I like that elite business performance. Yeah. So you got a smart, a smart, uh, smart performance coaching, and you've got an elite business performance coaching. If you, if you want to get involved in that bit of it as well, that's the bit that I'm going to monetize, because that's what I'm going to sell to corporates and salespeople and all the rest of that. So the, ha the happiness formula I'm giving away for free. But at some point, I want to make millions and billions and all of that. 
because I want to do much better than Zuckerberg and Gates and all of those who, you know, they do give a lot of their money back and are philanthropic, but to me, not in some of the better ways. Like for me, I'm an entrepreneur um, godfather or fairy godmother or whatever. I love entrepreneurs and actually a lot of people struggle. Do you know 90% um, of businesses fail in the first five years and a lot of time because they haven't got the funding or the finance? And there's a lot of people call themselves angel investors, but basically what they are are predatory investors who want to get into opportunity to make more money. So what I want to be is a proper angel investor that gives people the money and says, right, here's your boost, here's your bonus, get on and make your money. And here's some information and knowledge and advice on how to do it. This is just such a kind-hearted thing to do and, and to embody and to be. And I think that a lot of people that are money, money driven. I mean, we all need money, right? We need to live and pay our bills, but at the same time, there's a humane way to go about supporting people without like shortchanging your bottom line or your value, but giving a ton of yourself. And I think in, in fitness, I'll just say this point blank in fitness and in nutrition and what I do, people don't really realize that what sounds expensive yeah. is actually Tons and tons of hours and care that goes in. And I think yeah. the same thing is true for business. You know, that you could have like an, a million dollar idea. You can have um, tons of time invested in, you know, just coming up with the plan, the product, the support. I mean, everything that I've had mentors that have helped me with, it's priceless. And so when I look at from a coaching perspective as a fitness coach, like, People don't really realize how much love and care goes into that. But when you focus on the love and care and you focus on the value and the people, supposedly they say the money comes. <laughs> well, you know, I don't care whether it does or it doesn't, but I'm hoping to, I'm hoping that is true and it does, but I don't care whether it does or it doesn't because I'm not materialistic at all. All money is, right, is a conduit between value and value, right? I'm actually such a good negotiator and have been all my life. I've been in sales since I was 11, but I don't need paper representation of value. I can do something for someone and get them to do something for me. And there's the exchange of value. I don't need pictures of the queen or ex presidents to display that value. You know, I can get you onto my podcast and showcase you to my audience and then get you to share my smart formula to your audience. Where was the need for paper in that, in that transaction? Right. And I guess at the end of the day, when you're a heart driven type of professional, you, you want the impact. Of course you want to be able to pay your bills, but you want the impact and you want to be everywhere from what I heard out of you before we started the podcast is that you want to be everywhere. And I, I found myself saying that two years ago, I'm like, I want to be everywhere. I want to affect everybody everywhere, all across the country, all across the globe. And yes when you take on such a huge task and this is what really drives you, you need others, you need people, you need connection, you need influence. And it doesn't mean you're always going to get paid, but the best currency is knowing that you're providing value and somehow, some way it'll come back and it always does. But systems, knowing that- Systems, technology, relationships, relationships, efficiency, action, marketing, and sales. I'm a marketing and sales specialist. I'm an efficiency specialist. I'm a systems and technology specialist. I'm a relationship specialist, yeah? This is why I will achieve what I need to achieve because I've got all of the component parts that I need. Most people don't know enough about sales, don't know enough about marketing, don't have the right relationships, don't know about efficiency, don't know that they have to do 10 times more action than they think they're gonna do. I don't know about the systems and the technology. So they're behind the curve in all of those seven areas where they need to be above the curve in. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so yeah. So this that's is my so incredible. And I, of course, you're providing such great value. I mean, I'm, I am picking up everything you're putting on. Of course, really learning, learning from you right now, just how valuable it is to lock arms with people with the same mission, I guess you could say, or same vision and don't let up on that dream. You know, I'm sure they like to drop like bombs and nuggets to your audience. And if they didn't deduce this themselves, it's like lock arms with people that you know are going the same direction that 
when one comes up with an idea that just, it just feels so aligned, you could really truly co-sign it. And it's not like you're doing things that are unnatural. It really is what and how you believe, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly looking to build my team. I've got a, um, a mastermind, a strong communicators mastermind where I get the best people from my podcast from the 250 and I put them into my mastermind, which is a free mastermind and we all help each other. So I'm building my team yeah. because you can't, you can't become a global player, you know, on your own. You can't impact the world on your own. It doesn't matter who you are. You've got to do it as a team. And actually as a leader, it's more important, the team are more important than me. So when I have my mastermind, for example, it's more about them than it is about me. I'm not, I want to help them. I don't really, I'm not bothered about myself. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to help other people. And that's the key thing to life is to serve others. And if you can make yourself valuable to others, then I believe you'll become valuable. Whether that you have the monetary value for that or not, I don't really care. What does it matter? What most people do when they, 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 they work with the dog, they save up all of this money, they buy a lot of shiny things, which they decide after a while, I, I've got enough shiny things, I don't need any more. And then they decide, actually, I just want to give my money away because that's the only thing that's really left for me to do in life. That gives me a feeling of uh, doing, having success and achieving something. So I'm a philanthropic entrepreneur. I, I don't have to give my money away. I just give my time away. I give myself away. I give my knowledge and information away. And that's what I, I highly recommend other people to do. Give, just give, give stuff away. Yeah, you know, once I've got enough to cover my cost of living, I don't want to make any more money. I want to just help people. You know, I don't need, what do I want money for? I want to sit in the bank and then turn into some numbers and then to go from those numbers into some gold bars and for, to go from some gold bars to some houses, some assets, and to go into some estates and real estate and then to be sold and given away to charity. I'm just giving it, giving it away to charity at the, at the front end. Oh, for sure. I get it. Yeah, so um, no, no, nobody, I think it takes most people a lifetime till they get to their 50s, 60s, 70s, or even 80s to work this out. And I'm just blessed that I worked it out much earlier. Oh, definitely. Because honestly, we have to go through, I think, some trials and tribulations with our own maturity in the process of where we're at in business. And I could say that you're, if you're in chapter 15, maybe I'm in chapter two. And I think there's something to be said for that, that you come to these realizations naturally when you realize what's most important, but you have to come to a level of maturity in your own, you know, goals yeah. and in your own journey to be like, okay, what I put emphasis on before really isn't that important. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. And we all learn at different paces. I've been a, a, a keen student my entire life, which is why I think I got to the realization earlier than a lot of people. Because I, I, I've yeah. been a lifelong learner. I've, I've just, I've been sort of like a sponge. I just love learning. And since I, I, I got into personal development, I've always been into personal and business development and self-improvement. But I got into a proper personal development from 2017. I'm like I've learned more in the last like four years than I learned in the previous 40 years, 39 years. Yeah. And, and so I've been on like yeah. an, accelerant, an, an accelerant of learning, which was what I think and I believe is the final pieces of the puzzle of life and that meaning of life. The meaning of life to support others, to leave a legacy, to make a difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, so I'm on a mission to try and help other people get to that point as quickly as possible by educating them, which is why I do my podcast and why I get awesome entrepreneurs on to, to help them get to, because we're all in different stages. I want I like to chat with people and find out what stage they're at and see if I can lift them up a stage, say, listen, you want to read that book or listen to that person, you know, and, and just go through the development because, you know, you will get there. Everyone will get there. If they got the right heart and they got the right mind and the right attitude, then everyone can get there eventually. And you know what, I feel like from what I've seen uh, that you put out on Clubhouse with your just giving nature and the way you always have a resource for somebody. Like if they're looking for this, that you always have somebody that you can connect them to. And I think that is, it's just such a testament to, to your commitment to this and how you really truly are like a, a master networker and connector. Like it's, 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 it's very evident how you're able to help. So we thank you for that as part of, you know, the clubhouse crew. 
Well, I thank you for uh, for being wise enough and having enough wisdom, if you like, to see it, because not everybody sees the big picture, or everyone's um, empathetic enough and aware enough to notice what goes on. So, so that, that shows me that you're you're already well on. You know, you're not you're not far off where you need to get to. Yeah, you know, if you if you haven't quite found your okay. mission. <laughs> I'm hoping, but I also find myself liking the networking piece of, of just life. You know, I like to feel like if I have something that can benefit somebody, I am happy to share that knowledge and that, you know, just that connection. In fact, just through COVID alone, I've connected some of my friends to other friends and, and now we have like this little network. So some of the people that you have seen in the room that I've maybe been affiliated with me, those are all people that have come together and that have met each other that we're going to all be able to utilize each other's skills. And just, even if it's for just like support, you know, there's not enough of that. So I, I feel like naturally I have an affinity toward being like the plug, so to speak with anything that I, I can help out with. Now you're, you're like, again, you're probably on chapter 15 as opposed to chapter two. So you've got many more contacts, but at the end of the day, it's the spirit behind it. That's really 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 what's important i think yeah, but also you got as many contacts as i have you got more yeah maybe in a different world yeah this is true not a different world now in this world because you got all of my contacts and all of yours okay i love it when people correct me that i say some stupid things because honestly we all have a network like i'm, I'm sitting here playing like like humble pie like as if i don't know people but it just feels natural to be like you know well, actually we got know. the same number we got the same number because you got all of my contacts and i got yours and you got all of your contacts yeah. and now you got all of mine so we both have the same number of yeah. contacts now True. this is the benefit of this is the compound effect of, of joining together is that now you 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 have got access to all the people I got access to? Because all you got to do is say speak to Mike, and Mike will put you in touch with somebody. Yeah, no, this is this is perfect because the, the perspective is everything, right? Like you could think that you are really, you know, not that great or whatever. When in all honesty, you don't like people don't realize what they what their value is and what they bring to the table so it's actually really exciting that you brought up this point because if anybody's listening that struggled with that little you know imposter syndrome or inferiority complex it's like no you really do have a network and you have people that care and you have for sure a connection that you can share with others for sure yeah yeah definitely and um and ultimately um it doesn't really matter if, if everyone is always into measuring sizes of stuff or, you know, size of your network, size of my network, size of this, size of that, whatever. It doesn't really matter, right? right. What matters is, are you the best you that you could be? And are they the best thing that they could be? Like, yeah. And as long as you are, doesn't really, the numbers and the connections and, and whatever it may be, doesn't really matter. It's so important, yeah. And, and I can say this to every single person I ever meet is that they'll always be the best them that anyone else could ever be. Right. So it's almost like it's not even a competition. It's just when you give, especially if I have a, a person that I think I could do what they do, that I know that my client would be better served, I'd send them there. Like they're, they're, it'll come back. And, and yeah. it's these are like those like impromptu talks that you have about business that sometimes we don't think about and we don't mm -hmm. talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, this uh, was supposed to be more a chat about you than me, but we, we got into you asking me some questions. So let's get back to <laughs> yeah. asking you some questions. So, so tell me a little bit about how you can help people, you know, in the area of their of their um, uh, fitness and, and well being, etc. Well, to be honest with you, with my by trade, as they say, with me by trade being in fitness, my in sports performance and nutrition, my entire life or and especially adulthood as a, as a career. Um, after 20 years of that sort of studying and, and practical field work, as well as my own journey as a professional athlete, I turned pro in, in women's physique, which is an area of bodybuilding in 2019. So going through the motions as an athlete, going through the process to become a coach and to coach for 20 years, I feel like lifestyle is another area where the more clients I work with, the more people I interface with, 
people don't really see fitness for what it is like fitness. And we touched on this a little bit with your smart principle here, but fitness is not just like, let me just get this plan and do it. Very few people can do that and stick to it. And I have, a, I have a client that she calls herself queen of the day ones. Her husband calls her that because every other week she's on to something new. And I swear there is an art in consistency and in locking arms with a coach that's going to get you over those mental struggles. Whether you're fighting with an ex, whether your kid's sick and going crazy, the dog just died, God forbid. You know, whatever is going on at work, like, if your fitness and your health is your lifestyle, it's non-negotiable. Like you have your daily routine. It's like if meditation is part of your life, it's part of your routine. And a lot of times people don't look at it as a lifestyle. People don't look at it as the high performance model of like, well, my life is high performance. So let me treat it as such. They don't look at it that way. They look at it as, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to work out tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes next week. Next week becomes next month. And next month becomes six years later and 45 to 70 pounds <laughs> that has accumulated. So to have a coach, and this is where I come in with what I do to have a coach say, look, I'm not going to just give you some boo plan to just follow. You could get, I tell people, Get Save yourself internet. your hundreds of dollars and go to YouTube and get it for free. If you want someone that's going to walk the journey with you in every area, because I'm a high performance coach, I am not just like the booty trainer. Yeah. It'd be great if I had a tagline like the booty trainer in vogue now, but to really elevate on a transformational high performance level, people need to embody the fact that this is your life. Life is, is very, very all encompassing. Yeah. So what are you going to do? When no one in your family supports you, you need to stay on mission. Like I, I've leaned on coaches my entire life. So I think the best thing that I could provide to someone is that like, be to be that rock and that calm in the eye of the storm to say, okay, so you really went on that pizza wine vendor, huh? Okay. How are we going to, how are we going to back away from this? How are we going to make progress? Because what I see a lot in my clients is the perspective is way off way off. It's like, oh, I ate one Oreo. Let me say F this to the whole weekend. And then it becomes a bender on crap. I'm like, no, no, just because you made one small choice doesn't mean you can't make a good choice after it and continue to make good choices. Like why, why we're all or nothing and why we are ready to throw the baby out with the bathwater is something that is a common, common theme. And coaches really help with those strategies and, and of course the knowledge that I know that nobody else knows. So um, I like to almost kind of like branch away from fitness and say, I'm not just fitness. I'm like essentially a lifestyle coach. Cause I will take every detail and, and tease out, which is in essence, custom and concierge style of coaching. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, and actually, you know, you can teach the smart formula way better than I could because, you know, I've got, the ability to perform as exercise, you know, well-balanced nutrition and uh, hydration. And that's very simplistic. But, you know, if you follow those rules, you will be uh, fitter, healthier and, uh, you know, full of better uh, vitamins and goodness, etc. Yeah. But some people need to overcome problems and obstacles and hurdles to make those things happen. But for me, I'm very mentally strong and I can just decide, right, I'm having no sugar, I'm having no salt, I'm having no uh, flour, you know, I'm, um, you know, I'm cutting out uh, everything other than just the three square meals a day, you know, so no biscuits, no crisps, I can just decide that and that's fine. But I've been pushing my brain and I've been, I've made outside my comfort zone, my comfort zone, my entire life, yeah, so I'm actually, I'm comfortable in my, in my, outside of my comfort zone, obviously there's still things I haven't done, and so if I was to go and do them, they would be uncomfortable for a while, but I have spent my life trying to keep pushing boundaries and boundaries, getting better and better and more performance, and try this and do that, and, and so, so therefore I'm not uncomfortable outside of my comfortable, I'm not uncomfortable in awkward uh, situations or new situations etc like so i can just give people my formula and if they're like me they can just follow the formula fine and th there will be plenty of people like that but there will be lots more people a bigger percentage again who really need coaching through you know the ability to perform because i don't say to people just exercise 30 minutes a day 30 minutes a day i could not exercise for a year and then just go into exercising twice a day 30 minutes a day because 
I'm sporty. I played a lot of sport when I was a kid and that. I enjoy it. I just go for a walk first, then I go for a jog, then I go for a run, then I go on my bike. You know, it's not hard. For me, it's not hard. But it's extremely hard for some people. So therefore, you know, when it, like if people got to the stage where they're like, well, you know, I'm doing all of the form, I just can't get the exercise down, or I just can't get the, uh, I just keep forgetting the water, or, you know, or I, um, or, um, you know, I just, I keep having that um, drink every now and then, or I can't get rid of my caffeine or whatever. I could say to them, give them mental issues, and uh, hot mental, you know, um, motivation and say, well, you know, just, you, you just got to stop it. How many coffees you have on a day three, drop it down to two and drop it down to one. With me, it's all about incremental steps, et cetera. Yeah. So I, I can work with people. I manage people all my life and, you know, help people all my life. So I can, I can do it, but, you know, you're actually more, um, used to doing that and more expert at that, those bits of it, if you like. So that's why, you know, for me, it's a good lead generator, you know, because if I get somebody, like a good friend of mine in my mastermind is a sleep expert. So I tell people, you've got to have seven to eight hours sleep. If they say they're struggling with sleep, I'd say have a hot bath, you know, just before you go to bed so that you feel nice and relaxed and, and then try and relax. Or if you can't sleep, you know, um, put some meditation on and try and uh, hypnotize yourself to sleep and I give them some basic stuff to that. If obviously then those things weren't to work, then I just say, well, listen, speak to a sleep expert, you know? So actually my formulas are right. a, great, a great lead referral thing. Like mm -hmm. So it's like with the streams, I'm going to put a whole lot of online courses, the systems, technology, relationships, efficiency, action, marketing, and sales. I know a lot about each one of those areas. I used to work in a big corporate company, which has to have systems in place. I used to sell IT solutions and I've been, you know, really um, au fait with technology since I was like 11, right? Same, same, same time I started entrepreneurship because my, my nan bought me a catalog of uh, a computer on her catalog. And so I've been using computers ever since then. And that was ahead of the curve of most other people at that time. Um, so, like, so, so I know more about uh, systems and technology than most people because most people haven't been in fast growth corporate sales. Most people haven't um, uh, been around technology as much as I have, right? And then I've got relationships. I'm a relationships guru. I'm a networker, and I'm a um, you know a, a big person who's you know I never fought my family. I see everyone. I've got loads of friends. You know, I'm just a relationships person, like yeah. Efficiency I learned in the corporate world because I had a fast growth business, which um, which grew really quickly, and you learn efficiency from that. Action and taking massive action is a mental thing. I think big, most people don't. So when you think big, you realize you've got to take a lot of massive action to get big. But most people don't think big enough. They're only taking small actions. Yeah? And then I've been in marketing and sales my entire life. So therefore I've got expertise in all of those areas and I can teach people. But then there's still people out there who know far more about systems than I do. There are people who know far more about technology than I do. And there are people who know more about Relationships would be tough, but there are probably some relationship gurus who know a bit more. And um, you know, there's not many people I don't think you would think bigger than me. So the action space covered. Martin and sales, not many people got much more on me than that because it's my lifetime's work. But again, I could refer people in if if people need to know more about systems and technology than I can help them with. I can refer them in. It's like on the happiness form, and I can refer them in to sleep expert. Or I know the I've only just got into meditation. I'm not the world's best meditator. You know, I can refer people on in that is. I know what my strengths and weaknesses are, which is important too. Important to know what you can do and what you can't do, you need help with. Right, right. Sure. Which is why I it's mean, good I, coach, I totally you know? resonate with that. Repeat that. Yeah, it's, why, it's, it's why it's good to have a coach because sometimes you need help with, with the bits, oh, yeah. you know, there's bits you can do and there's bits you can't do. I'm quite good because I've been a manager since I was 18, so a long time. I'm good at managing other people and managing myself. And most people aren't very good at managing themselves. They need somebody to actually pull them to account, to kick them at the backside, to reward them when they're doing well. You know, all of the sort of things that you do as an awesome coach. And it's really funny because in business, the payoff is, you know, what you would make, right? Or the impact you would make. So whether it's financial or satisfaction internally, that's one thing, but the same thing with fitness, it's like the payoff is like, you get the health that you want, you get the body that you want, like the motivate. And this is one thing I never really understood. If the motivation has to come from somebody else, what the heck? Like it ends up becoming like, okay, the, the, vision that you have and the 
results that you know that you can get aren't strong enough to keep you going when you need that cheerleader. But we coach because people do need cheerleaders. And a lot of times if you're working with high performers like myself who can get a little crazy in the hunt, it ends up becoming coach needs to be there to be the voice of reason. Cause then you have some people that are so driven and, you know, they would run through 17 brick walls and have an arm fall off before, you know, they do anything smart. It's, you know, they need people to like, you know, keep them sane, keep them grounded. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Sorry. I was just um, sending a message. I was on my phone to my next guest. He was supposed to be on at uh, 10 o'clock, but I don't want to end this conversation now. So uh, I just said, I just pushed them back a little bit and that's uh, a Tony Robbins coach. But uh, at the moment, uh, you know, it's a high profile uh, podcast interview I've got next, but at the moment you're the high profile guest because in my world, everybody is equal. It doesn't matter how big a profile they are. I can, I can, I can um, take you from the world's equivalent of success metrics, whether someone is high profile or not, but it doesn't make them any more important. Not in my world. Everyone is equally as important in my world. So I, I, I'll, bump, I'll bump a Tony Robbins coach for you because at the moment I'm spending time with you. And, uh, and you're as equal as they are. Well, that's actually flattering because I, I adore everything that Tony Robbins has done to create opportunities for people to really get out of their own way and, and just believe in, and achieve. So, that I mean, that's kind of like... But, well, Tony Robbins is a legend, but, you know, he's a legend in the personal development world, but he's just a bloke the same as everybody else. He's just a bloke that's has a massive mission and a cause, so good luck to him. You know, and Tony Robbins was was taught by another legend uh, in Rome, who I think was you know one of the main influential godfathers of the personal development space. Although there was, there's always been people before uh, uh, Jim Rohn and people like that. There's you know the people who wrote, wrote um, uh, Think and Grow Rich and and all that. You know, there's generations of people educated with the knowledge that people are sharing in the personal development space. But you've got to want to take the mission on and. And uh, Jim Rohn took the mission on and, and cracked the speaking world, you know, the new media world and, and all of that. Tony Robbins has cracked the social media world and that, you know, and the business world and the entrepreneurship world and stuff. It's all generational, you know, they're, they're all passing the baton on to, to the next person to take the information and, and run with it, like, you know, so it's like a, like a tag team through history, you know, or a relay, or a sprint relay team through history, passing the baton on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. So I'm I I'm in that race. I'm gonna pick up that bat on at some point and I'm gonna do my lap. And you know, there's a time and place for everybody because the thing I'm learning in business is that you can have the same product as a million other people, but they're they're really buying you, they're buying into you. So the delivery can be completely different of the yeah. same thing. And you know, this is just an example, even though I, I totally understand. Tony Robbins, he may be different for me than you. Like, so there's different people out there with a similar type of impact in their intention, but some people may reach others in a different way. And I think it's fascinating that that's the one thing that when you get over that part and you really realize that you are for someone and there are yeah. people out there for you, it doesn't make you fret over who's better than you because like my mom can't be the, my mom is my mom. There's nobody else that can be my mom the way my mom is my mom. No. no. And, and lots of people see Tony Robbins as the top man, but I don't. I actually, I prefer uh, Les Brown from, motiv from a motivational point of view. And I prefer Brian Tracy from an educational point of view. But like you say, it's horses for courses. You know, I, I like Tony Robbins. I like, I like everything about him. I want to be somebody doing very similar things. So I respect everything he does. But he's not the person that resonates with me as much as some other people do. And that's like, like you said, there, you know, if, if only one person thinks that I resonate to them more than Tony Robbins does or Les Brown or any of those people, and I've got one person to help. And even if you only help one person on the planet, at least you've helped somebody. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And actually, the, when you mentioned a service, if you can add more value into your service, if you can hit the, the competitive price point, what everyone else charges, but deliver much more value, then actually you're giving and serving others and you're making it much easier to win custom and business because you're offering the best value for money proposition. So part of my advice in sales and marketing is always to be the best value for money proposition. That doesn't mean the cheapest. It just means the best choice. 
So if, for example, you're delivering amazing health and fitness training and coaching and motivation, but you're also helping them with their sleep, their meditation, the random act of kindness and their targets, and you're delivering extra value over and above what other people who are just dealing with their uh, fitness are doing. Yes. Yeah. So if you can help, that's the one you know, to learn. Like more, not yeah. everybody is. Oh, I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. You, you say what you were going to say. Especially in fitness, I had to learn that not everybody wants to be coached by someone who portrays themselves as perfect. Not everyone's going to, like, when you get into the psychology of people and what yeah. people are intimidated by and not by and what they, they gravitate toward, it's like there is someone for everyone and you don't yeah. have to feel pressure to be a certain mold. Well, it's like, it's like for the mass markets, the mass market men, for example, they, the, the reason they have um, women who are uh, like uh, the girl next door types rather than the perfect you know, supermodel type or whatever, because they'll be very intimidating to a lot of men or they would see it as out of their reach or whatever. So, you know, this is why, you know, it's all a matter of perspective at the end of the day. And there is somebody for everybody. And when I teach or when I talk to people and help people and teach them about getting a mentor and getting a coach, you know, I'm very rarely selling myself as a mentor and a coach. I'm advising them that they should find somebody who is the ideal mentor or coach for them. Yeah. So, so that's the person who resonates with you so much. And the advice that they give you is in line so much with what you should be doing. Yeah. That, that it's a no brainer to use that person. Because what happens is people take advice and information from people who are nothing like them. And they try and adapt themselves to the advice and the information, but then it actually makes it worse and not better because they've gone out of alignment with themselves and their own rhythms. Yeah. And I realized that the fame and the notoriety does not mean that you're aligned with that person no. like, to be able to help. So you talked about alignment and, and rhythm and all of that stuff. And it's just, it's just crucial to make sure that you have that connection. I think that's what it comes down to coaching, whether it's business strategies like you do or fitness is, is just com coming down to connection. It comes down yeah. to the people that really understand that this person cares. You're not a dollar sign. No. And, and, and you, you, you face them with your true authentic self. And if, if, if that's not right for them, then you let them go to somewhere where they would be more, uh, right for them you know yeah oh for sure yeah so and that's that's the I key agree. component that's it's the key so yeah that's the key the key part of coaching is knowing when you can coach people and when you can help them and when you can't absolutely absolutely yeah. and and that's another thing like i could have people and i'm sure you've had this encounter as well could have people paying you adoring you but at the end of the day if they don't do what you're asking them to do, yeah. what's the point? No, you can lead exactly. people to water, you can keep them drink. So it's, yeah. I believe that the most beautiful relationship when that is the person who's ready, willing, and able to do it. And it's like, when you're ready, the coach will appear. Yeah. <laughs> and that's an amazing relationship to have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, so tell us a little bit about uh, the, the courses or how, how it works, what it costs, uh, how they get in touch with you, all that sort of stuff. Well, currently I have a couple of different options in how I work with people um, for money tightness issues where people are really, really on a fixed budget. They find that either a one-time consultation or a group coaching program that I have is most cost effective for them and also depends on how what type of person they are. Like I'm a kind of person, I want direct custom contact and, and attention from coaches that I have, but there are other people that thrive well in groups. So I have a group coaching program that averages about $40 a month. Sometimes we run a, a year in full special. Um, and then I have a one-time consultation that lays out everything essentially. So we, we do a full consultation form to brief me on it. And then we do a Zoom call for you know roughly an hour to really tease out what the issues are and what you're struggling with, what strategies are we gonna use? And then I write everything up in a summary. So the consultation is for those like pretty diligent, like self 
motivated types that just want the expert guidance once, but they don't need the check-ins. And then the one-to-one coaching is the most popular fitness or nutrition. Yeah. Um, and then fitness and nutrition are different packages and then packages where we can add on virtual sessions. So you could be anywhere in the world to work with me, or if you're local to Miami, we can work out something in person. If you add sessions onto your package, which all of that includes like me, of course, I'm like the common denominator with all of this, but it's very goal driven specific to what you're trying to do. It's written out in a program that is uploaded to an app that I use as my platform to deliver it. But essentially the coaching relationship and, and really making sure we're monitoring and tweaking what's going on is really the bread and butter of the programming. And I mean, I have some clients I talk to four times a day <laughs> and then others that don't check in for like, until like the week, you know, the day that they're assigned. So it really is, is, you know, 24 seven access to a trainer that in a gym, you'd probably be paying for your hour. And then you never talk to them again because they're just tapped to the gills, which is a side note as to why from a business perspective, I like the online model. I could talk to anybody in the world. I could serve I have clients in Australia, you know, like it's just, it's just a great concept to be able to feel so close to somebody and not feel like that person is literally only able to book you into a certain hour because they're so busy at a gym on their feet all day and they can't access their phone. Like online coaching has been pretty revolutionary as the way to go for. Yeah. Well, it sounds to me in my success formula. Yeah. It sounds to me in my success formula. you got systems and technology wrapped up, right? So well done yeah. on that. Yeah. I think relationships, you're there, but you probably need to get out there and connect a bit more. Is what yes, I'm- that's the thing. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, you can that's be the best kept secret. Yeah, so that's another thing that you need to do. Are you any good at efficiency? Are your systems in and technology producing efficiency in your business? Are you getting kind of things done quickly to give you more time back? To be honest with you, that's an area that I want to improve because I spend so much time on the details because I care so stinking much that I get so specific. And at this point, um, to let go of that a little bit. I'm, it's still like my baby. I'm like the mom. I want to be in on every little detail. So as things get busier and busier and busier, like, it, like I actually work better when I have less time, but when I have more time, I'm like, Oh, I'll do it in five minutes. And then I'll spend six hours on the same detail. Like you just can't afford to do that in business. If time is money and you should always be recruiting yeah. and serving people. <laughs> especially, especially because when I give you the other ones, which you so you're lacking a bit on the relationships that like you have to get out of networking more. You've got the efficiency a bit, but you need more of that. The systems and technologies are sorted, yeah. I think you, you, you think big, right? So you, the actions, are you 10x thinking? Or are you just thinking double, triple, whatever? You know, because you're a bodybuilder, you know, you're used to competing and performing. Are you thinking at 10x levels? Or are you thinking at two, three times? Are you thinking about just being good and being big, not thinking, you know, world domination? I so first of all, world domination is definitely the word. And when I sat out and wrote this all out on a board in my old apartment two and a half years ago when I moved to Miami, I had this like vision. I was going to be like, you know, like the Oprah Winfrey, Susie Orman, Jillian Michaels, beauty princess all rolled into one, basically saying I'm going to be like, I want to be this global expert in lifestyle, mindset, fitness, nutrition, and of course, teaching people how to make money when my systems are in place that, you know, are automated and, you know, you present people with opportunities to be able to do that. And so I had this vision two and a half years ago and I was like, okay, well, there's the mountain. I'm just, I better take the first step. What now? So I think when you have a vision that big, me, (laughs) I personally get a little overwhelmed and then stuff doesn't happen at all. So I need to be better at keeping the vision in the, in the distant future as like, that's what we keep chipping away at. Like nobody goes to the NBA championships and on the first day of practice, they, you know, you know that it's months and months and months and months and months on the line and a career like this is years down the line. Yeah. They do, they do one match at a time. Yeah. But what they are aiming for is they're aiming to be consistent for 10 years and they think, right, I just got to get through to the semifinals first time and and then the, the finals next time. And, and, and then the Super Bowl after that, right? right. right? So it's stepping stones, right? So most people have the big vision. And a lot of people do the daily tasks, but actually they haven't got the middle goals, which are the things they need to do in order to achieve the big thing. So if you actually put the, the stepping stones in the middle, yeah, and then so, so, so then the big things don't look so far away because you've got, you've got land in the middle. It's not as big a leap. Yeah, and then all you've got to do then is work out. Take for example, like, like I'll, I'll break it down exactly in a real life scenario. 
I want to be a global speaker, right? To be a global speaker, yeah. be well connected, right? Which is, means I'm, 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 I'm building my tribe daily, every day, to be connected with more people, right? I've got to be connected with events people and other speakers. <laughs> every day, I'm getting connected to them, right? Yeah. I've got to start speaking for free in order to start paying, uh, start getting paid to speak, right? So I'm already set, starting the stepping stones to getting free gigs before I'm in the paid one, like that. I also started my podcast, but I've got to start getting like massive downloads and streams, yeah, so that once people see me doing that, that'll elevate me to the big stages that I want to get onto. I'm going to grow my YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> those numbers up like that. So all of those things are easier goals to achieve, but once I achieve them all, I know they'll lead to the bigger goal at the end, yeah? So then all I've got to do then is break down, okay, these these five component parts that I need to do, they will all, once I've done all of those things, the gap to the stage will be small, be able to see it, and now it's miles away, yeah? And all I've got to do is set out daily tasks every day in each one of those areas, and I know then that if I just spend time every day doing the same thing and give myself 10 years, 20 years, however long it may be, nobody knows the end point, you just keep consistently, persistently doing it, and eventually you will achieve those medium goals and you'll achieve the big goal. So that's, that's, how, that's how to break it down. So most people do the daily tasks. They're not in line with the big goal. So they're, they're, all, they're off uh, track tasks. And they haven't got the middle stuff, the stepping stones to the big goals, which brings the distance in, gives them the confidence that they can achieve those things and gets them much closer to the big goal. So, that would, so I, I think you think massive, right? But you just maybe need to strategize yeah. the, the, the tactics a little bit more. Yeah, you've got to put the, the yeah. I think that keeping that in stride and paced appropriately as to not get overwhelmed, but also not get you know falling behind is is key. Yeah, yeah. So 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 that's that. And then most people don't know sales and marketing as well as they need to in order to hit success in the traditional measurements of success. When it comes to wealth, assets, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because there are people out there in the world who are better singers, better actors, better musicians, better pianists, better fitness people, and all the people that the world believes are the best at all of those positions, right? But they're unknown, right? There are better DJs, there are better everything. There's much better actors than The Rock. And the Rock gets seen as being more successful because of the metrics of his marketing and his sales. People know about The Rock. They don't know about Jeff, who's doing pantomime in, in uh, you know, Miami, uh, Miami Stage School, who might be a better actor than The Rock, but he's not very good at marketing and sales. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so actually, you need to get that efficiency kicked in, not because you need the press. You, you're like, well, I, I perform better under pressure. Well, you've got pressure to do all of this extra 10x actions and marketing and sales, which you're not doing at the moment. But you need to get efficiency on the process, the systems and the process and the technology that you're doing. You need to strip that down to be less and less time because you need more and more time to do these other component parts that you're missing at the moment in the success formula. And if you can add those success elements to what you're doing now, then pretty much you're, at the moment you're working out your legs and you're missing your arms. Yeah? Are you doing that? <laughs> you've got certain bits that you're exercising. But there's just a few bits that are, you, know, you missed leg, leg day at the gym a couple of times. You know, you've got to get on the legs, like, you know? So, um, and that's what it is. And that's what the seven steps are. The seven steps are you've got to do them all equally over your lifetime. And I can guarantee you, you will become more successful if you keep growing the areas of your systems, your technologies, your relationships, your efficiencies, your actions, your marketing, and your sales. If you concentrate and become better at all of those areas, you cannot fail to become more successful. This is just knowledge bombs just being dropped. I hope your I hope your listeners are taking it all in. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm here to help you really. So as long as you're taking them in, that's the most important. Thing. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I was just sitting here thinking, okay, I'm gonna make some space on the whiteboard and and write down what I can look at every morning with the smart 
you know, formula for happiness, but also the seven pillars. And so for the good of all of us, let's list out the seven pillars for your smart streams one more time. Yeah, so it's uh, systems, uh -huh. technology, yep. relationships, efficiency, action, marketing, and sales. Okay. When I was typing, I, I didn't, I missed the last three because those are things that like, when you look at, in fact, we did this when I was in college sports and I hate to be that person. Like when I was a college strength coach, but when I was a college strength coach, it's the same thing as, as coaching people or athletes. You have so many different areas. You have nutrition, you have sports psychology, you have experts that are going to be in recovery and regeneration. You have every aspect who's the best in speed agility and change of direction, who knows conditioning the best. And it's like building your network while well, having a, a seven pillar system for your business is also looking at these seven pillars and saying, well, I suck at marketing. Who can I go to? And what does marketing entail? And then there are offshoots to that. Maybe marketing is in the form of a podcast. Maybe marketing is in the form of Facebook ads. Like what is marketing? What is, what are all these things broken down to? And who are the experts that if you know, like, like you don't like writing content and content is part of marketing then get a VA. Who's the best VA for your budget and for what you're trying to do? Who does yeah. everybody else use? And and, and now I've just I've just tackled a block, right? I've just tackled a block. I've just put business into a scenario that is equal to one you've used all your life. And it's nothing different. You've just not recognized that keeping a business healthy and fitness and in good shape and in good well-being, you haven't realized that it's the same technique what you do all your life. It's what you know. You know how to do this. And all I've done is just move a little mental block. Yeah. And now you realize, yeah, that actually there's a couple of, you need to get working on those legs. You need to get working on the, you know, on the, um, the fitness or the, the mental approach or the, the vision, visionary or whatever, like, you know, you know, and, and I connect well and resonate well with fitness people because I played sports to a decent level as a kid. You know, I was the fastest boy in school. I won um, the league and cup double in my rugby team in school. You know, I'm a winner. You're a winner. This is what we recognize. And in order to be a winner, we know that we've got to concentrate, we've got to break down all of our component parts and make sure we've got the best coaching or the best advice or the best person in and make sure that bit is equal to all the rest of the bit because we can't afford any weak bits. We've got to be fully, especially a bodybuilder, you've got to, you can't have like a flabby chin or you can't have like a wrinkly neck or, you know, you've got to have the whole package. Yeah, for sure. For sure. There's, there's so many parallels. And I actually think, so I have a little podcast now that was like all by myself. And the one I'm working on now is to be one where there's a guest speaker on it with me that gets interviewed kind of like this. And I did one talking about the parallels between business and fitness, because the discipline is still the same, the balance that you need for, you know, whether you're looking at a physique or a, a well-functioning business and so many people, whether it's in that fitness or health and wellness journey or in their business are off balance in certain areas where they need to be better. And having an assessment, whether, you know, a coach in fitness or even a business coach, like you, they could point out all of these areas, which you eloquently done in your formula to, to point out to people like, okay, this is what you need and you can't do it all. You, and then you also need other people to help you with this. Yeah, well, why do you think, what's the biggest answer that most entrepreneurs give to their success? Have you ever heard that? Have you, have you analyzed it and listened to entrepreneurs and see what they say? Because if, if, you, if you haven't got an answer, I can give you an answer and it will resonate with you straight away. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I look at all of the people that I looked at over the years as influential to me and successful and they yeah. all consistently have just frozen a minute hopefully you'll be back hopefully we'll be back come on come on wi-fi don't let us down yeah okay we lost you for a bit but you're back that's one of those things doesn't matter um, but um, yeah, so what, what have you what have you heard of most entrepreneurs that you've taken to be the secret to the success? The team that surrounds them, like the team Bingo. around them. Bingo. Every entrepreneur will tell you it's the team they build around them. And then something else you may have heard of, your network is your net worth. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
the reason it resonates with everybody, whether they've actually noticed it or not, yeah, but it will eventually sink in, yeah, you'll spot the trends, yeah, because you can't do it alone, you can't make an impact on this planet on your own, it's the team you build around you, the team of coaches, the team of experts, the team of specialists, etc. you know, so, um, so hopefully that's been of uh, some some use to you. I've got to shoot now because I've got another podcast episode. But just let people. Oh know. wow! Awesome. Well, I'm so honored to be here, and I and I'm very grateful for the gems that you dropped and the time that you spent. And I cannot wait to hear uh, hear uh, all about you know the next ventures and how we can continue to provide value to people. Brilliant, brilliant. And how do people get in touch with you? What's the best uh, web address, social media, and all of that? Oh my goodness. Well, on everything, Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse, and uh, what's that other one? TikTok. <laughs> I'm at Christina Specco, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-N-A-S-P-E-C-O-S. I can't even spell my name. Um, <laughs> I'm most active on Instagram. I'm kind of crazy with Instagram. Same thing if you Google me and, and or search me in the Facebook bar, I have a business page and a, and a uh, personal page. And christinaspeckos.com is the website that I've got with brief information. I'm slowly loading more on there because I want to build the blog out there as well. And I want to, you know, put some more videos and stuff, but I've got a, a bunch of things that are headed on there with other podcasts I've done. I'm on Anchor. So easiest way is to probably go to Instagram and my link tree or, or hit me up directly. I'm open for all questions and, and yeah. just knowing how I can connect with others and serve. And I'll give you I'll give you the smart happiness formula and the stream success formula. You can put that on your website as well. And uh, you know, like I say, uh, I'm just going to give people the seven elements, not the training and the education to improve those elements, which is going to be coming in books and books and courses and all of that. And I'm going to charge for them, yeah. but people can have the actual whole because it's just a daily formula. They can have the whole formula for the happiness because I think it's an amazing legacy. To just make as many people happy as possible. And I don't think people should have to pay for happiness. And I might have to introduce this to my clients as I'm going to up level and give you another job on top of your job. You are yeah. going to have to come up with your own formula within the smart framework. This is going to be great. And this will be, this will be your influence trickling down to, to even more. Brilliant, brilliant. And, and and ultimately, if I can help you get more clients, you help me get more clients. That's how it works. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we're now teammates. We're now part of the same family, part of the same mission. So, uh, you know, our mission is to serve and our mission is to uh, help each other and help all the other connections that we have. And, and, and um, you know, they're just pouring through at the moment through Clubhouse. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a very fast accelerating growth now because of Clubhouse, you know, rather than having to just do loads and loads of content and really market, market, market to build that audience. It's happening just, yeah. just at the next levels at the moment, 20x levels. It's ridiculous. The amount of podcast guests and level amazing people I've got on my podcast, just like Christina Pecos, and it's just amazing. Well, I'm honored and I am looking forward to staying in touch. I'll be popping in on your clubhouse rooms a lot. Trust me. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you on clubhouse probably a bit later. And I only had three hours. Yeah, most likely. I only had three hours sleep last night. So I may not, I might just give it a call and go on it all weekend, but I, I'll probably get addicted and be, and be listening whilst having a bit of a snooze. But anyway, I got to get my seven to eight hours sleep because it's part of my formula. I need to catch up now. I know. Now, this is the one reason why I probably won't be on tonight if I'm not, because sleep is of the, I, I have this expensive ring to yell at me when I don't sleep enough and I ignore it. So, but I put my money where my mouth is and actually listen to it. But I do have some early clients three in a row tomorrow morning in person. So if I don't pop on the clubhouse, then that's why. And if I do, I'm probably sleeping in the background. <laughs> No problem at all. And I'm just uh, sending my uh, the Zoom link. Well, we're, while we're saying bye, I'm sending the Zoom link to the next chap. So uh, uh, there will be two seconds. I don't mind uh, cutting it. I don't cut any of this out or, or edit it or anything like that. I'm just authentically me. I'm a multitasker. That's how I'm able to get 250 guests and why I'm able to get 833 episodes on my podcast because I'm not after perfection. I'm after massive action. Well, I spent today getting um, amazing women that I admire uh, messaged about my podcast. 
and I'm starting a new one and I really feel there's an opportunity for women entrepreneurs, athletes, executives, or just moms that were trying to start a business, people that handle it all, just to inspire other women across, women across the globe that you can do it all, but it really does take a village. So yeah. I've been. I, I got to go now anyway, right? So I got to go now. I have a few films. <laughs> yeah, well, I got to go now anyway, but, uh, but uh, take care. And if ever you want me to come on any of your podcasts, let me know. I happily uh, return the favor and have a great day, okay? Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.